Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Webinar Express, which is Top Marketing Data and Analytics Trends to Drive Future Growth, which has been organized by CIM Southwest with our guest speaker, John Beeston. If you're a university student attending today's webinar, you may want to sign up to the CIM Marketing Club. It'll keep you up to date with the latest trends, innovations, and concepts in the marketing industry. All you'll need to do is hover your mobile phone camera lens over the QR code you see on the screen at the moment, and it will take you to the Marketing Club sign-up page. So I'd now like to hand you over to John Beeston, who is Product Marketing Director for Salesforce Marketing Cloud, who's our guest speaker today. So over to you, John. Thank you uh, very much, Judith, uh, for that introduction. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm uh, John Beeston uh, from Salesforce, um, and uh, I'm the Product Marketing Director uh, in EMEA for our uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And uh, thank you all for uh, joining, and thanks to the CIM for inviting me. Um, I'm going to just introduce Salesforce a little bit. I'm sure I'm, many of you will have heard the name, and, and I hope maybe there's some of our customers on here as well. But um, the thing that's got Salesforce through the last 18 months and everyone who works here is, that, is our values. And I think this has been really important as we've seen such uh, tremendous change in the last um, year or so. But, I mean, uh, trust is our number one value, and it has been ever since um, ever, ever since the company started. And I think, you know, particularly as we talk about data uh, later on in this presentation, then, you know, having that trust in data, in, you know, in privacy, uh, in commitment to keeping that data uh, secure and, uh, and open and ready to be used by our customers has been incredibly important to us. Um, beyond trust, then customer success is the most important thing for us. So making sure that customers are first and we can act as uh, a trusted digital advisor. Our third value is innovation. So we always want to apply a, a beginner's mindset, uh, thinking creatively and continuously learning about how uh, we can do business to support our customers. And then finally, um, equality. We're very committed at Salesforce to being active allies so that you know whoever you are in the world, we're working towards a more inclusive um, and sustainable and equal world. We really believe that business is the greatest platform for change, and uh, we we like to put our money where our mouth is on that, as it were. We have our one uh, one one model, which means uh, we focus um, one percent of our of our time of uh, of our um, equity and our product towards um, making change positive change in the world. And we've done that through countless grants, lots of volunteer hours. I was doing some of that personally myself last week with a fantastic uh, charity based in London um, and lots of uh, work with nonprofits, education and other philanthropic organisations. We do that because we think doing if we do good, it helps us do well. And we think the numbers prove that not only in terms of our revenues, but in terms of the responses we get in terms of how we lead in philanthropy. Uh, in, in in employee and workplace culture and also in innovation um, and that's helped us be the number one CRM product uh, over the last number of years and you know we're number one not because of um, chance but because of our customers and because uh, our customers continue to stay with Salesforce continue to inspire us to build our products and to innovate on top of them and the last thing uh, I wanted to just mention about Salesforce is our trailblazers. Um, it's not just about companies uh, achieving their goals, it's about individuals. And, you know, I like to think there's lots of trailblazers on this call. Uh, we have about 15 million uh, trailblazers across the world, about 1,300 uh, trailblazer community groups. Um, and, you know, helping those individuals uh, achieve their goals, their career goals, their skills goals, and so on is really important to us. And to sort of set the scene, I think marketers these days, they've got two critical imperatives that they're trying to trying to balance. The first one is the traditional role of the marketer, really to deliver that exceptional customer experience, build trust with your customers, build personalized experiences that are engaging and that build loyalty and advocacy um, over time. But the second thing we find ourselves doing, and this is so true in the digital era, is understanding how can we find the optimal efficiency and growth for the uh, for the money that we spend. 
how do we make sure we're getting the maximum ROI? How are we testing and learning? How are we looking at data to find analysis and insight? And that we're really demonstrating as marketers that we can deliver not just great marketing campaigns, but great business impact and lifetime value stuff that the you know that the greater organization outside of marketing really cares about. And what the last 18 months or so has taught us is that digital transformation is no longer optional. I think, you know, two years ago, three years ago, you would have heard lots of stories of companies, large and small, talking about their digital transformation uh, projects and that being in the time frame of five years, eight years, 10 years. Um, suddenly, the shift to digital has quickened and it's an absolute imperative. And that's where you see people like, um, Adidas, as their physical stores had to close, they shifted all of their sales to e-commerce and they did that very quickly. Um, if you're still delivering a physical experience like Starbucks, then building that sort of digital uh, experience around that is incredibly important. And we also see changes in the, um, in the environment we work in, not just COVID driving consumer changes, but things like the cookerless future, um, the changes that Apple is making in iOS 15 around privacy and tracking there's lots going on there and what that means is that it's made data and insight even more critical as we are trying to figure out what's going on what do our customers want and um how can we react to that um and let's face it probably in the last 18 months you've all been asked really difficult questions about how are you spending your money where is it going why is it going to those sources how can you be sure uh, that you're spending money in the right channels, on the right campaigns, on the right offers, messages, audiences, and so on? So this is the topic of our marketing intelligence report, um, because we don't have magic answers to all of those questions uh, at Salesforce about what's, you know, what people are thinking and what's going on in the world. We have to go out and we we speak to to marketers like you all the time, and one 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 of the ways that we do that is is through our research program. So um, our marketing intelligence report, we went out, we spoke to over a thousand different uh, brand marketers and advertisers globally. So here in the UK, but also in the US, other places in, uh, in Europe and also uh, in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, they're all marketing decision makers, all uh, uh, you know, of me medium to high seniority. And the other thing we asked them to do was we also asked them to sort of self-select, if you will, to say, do you think you're a high performer based on your ROI that you're getting from your marketing investment? Or do you think you're a low performer? And uh, we'll, I'll probably reference uh, that a little bit further in the presentation. So if I, if I, if I do talk about that, then hopefully that explains um, what I mean. So the very first thing we asked them was um, to try and understand how has the pandemic uh, forced you to reassess your priorities? And I think we've got some really uh, interesting topics in here. And this is where, you know, it, I can make this distinction between the high performers and the low performers. The high performers, those people getting that, that the satisfied with the ROI they're getting, they were much more likely to have tested new marketing tactics and strategies. Uh, they were much more likely to have preserved uh, their marketing uh, budget, they were much more likely to be drive, delivering personalized messages um, and having a, a message that customized to individuals. And I think, you know, it, 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 it's a really interesting um, comparison about how, you know, those people that were, were ready to test, that had data available, um, that also could collaborate, um, and were connected with their leadership, they were much more likely to find the ROI uh, that they were looking for uh, than those that didn't. And in 2021, the focus has absolutely been on growth. 85% um, of marketers uh, view their position as uh, critical uh, for driving growth. And those high performers and agency mar marketers are much more likely to have led marketing led growth as a key priority. And I think this is a really interesting shift that the pandemic has driven and, and digital transformation has driven is that now that the customer experience is much more likely to be driven in a digital context, the ownership 
uh, the leadership around that customer experience is increasingly coming from the marketing department, even if that means doing things and engaging with other functions that traditionally we haven't done before. And I think that that that's a really interesting thing. We also asked the marketers, you know, what what are your growth defining metrics? Sales and revenue right at the top of that. Perhaps that's uh, no surprise. But I think number two here, uh, customer satisfaction and net promoter score. Um, they're not metrics that you hear about quite so often. And, you know, perhaps, you know, they 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 feel a little bit old fashioned, but um, they're, they're increasingly important and some. Uh, research we did in our state of marketing report also said that marketers really increased their value of customer satisfaction and NPS scores. And I, and I think maybe one of the reasons for that actually is because if something's happened in the last 18 months, it's a lot of our metrics, our benchmarks have changed radically. And it's sometimes been difficult to understand whether we're doing a good job or not beyond that sales and you know that top line or bottom line sales and revenue figure. And I think sometimes when we're lost there and we're not sure about our sort of middle of funnel metrics and all this kind of stuff and whether the messages we're putting out are really working, then sometimes the best thing to do is just to go out and ask the customers. And I think that's why we see um, customer satisfaction and NPS scores, um, you know, being the the number two uh, important metric uh, for marketers. But I think what's interesting is when we ask uh, these marketers how satisfied uh, are you that you're measuring these metrics properly and you're using these metrics properly? Less than half uh, said they were satisfied uh, for all of those metrics, which I think is another thing in that it's one thing to measure it. Uh, it's another thing to find insight and to be able to take action off the back of that. So the reason is, well, why why is that difficult when, you know, um, if if we're not satisfied with our ability to use those metrics, what, what's holding us back and and perhaps There'll be some familiar stuff here um, that I think rings true for many marketers. And the number one of that number one on there is that misalignment of measurement um, and reporting. And that misalignment, actually, you know, these might seem like disparate um, barriers here, but actually they're all connected. You know, that misalignment almost always comes for a few reasons. One is about data governance and management. You know, where's the data coming from? What format is it coming from? How is it organized? What are the taxonomies? What are the hierarchies? All of that foundational stuff, which often isn't correct. And that makes it really hard to put the right measurement and reporting together. And what falls out of that is if you don't have that alignment, um, it's really hard to get those real time insights. It's really hard to align our marketing activity to the really important business KPIs that the CEO, the CFO uh, cares about. Um, and underpinning a lot of this, of course, is just access to resources, you know, human resources, but also uh, technical resources um, to, to actually, you know, implement the right processes um, and the right methodologies uh, to make this better. So that's hard. But let's also say that the world around us is hard. We ask, you know, this is a this is a, a very common question. We ask people, how much data are you actually using uh, for your cross channel marketing? I'm sure you've all seen uh, one of those chief Martech diagrams um, where there's, I oh God knows, 8000 logos on a page and they, they're sort of somewhat organized and somewhat color coded. And I'm sure the Salesforce, Salesforce logo is in there a few times as well. But there's just a plethora of technology and channels available to us digital, digitally uh, to go to market. And, you know, we saw that um, a significant number, 50 percent or more, are using a minimum of uh, 16 uh, sources of, of information, you know, on average, 21 uh, platforms uh, to manage our campaigns. That brings huge complexity. And, you know, that and that complexity comes with lots and lots of data. And it's often quite difficult to process that, to you know, to get your head around it and, and, and use it all uh, correctly. And through those channels, what, you know, what the marketers are commonly measuring is obviously sales revenue. That's what we care about. But also, you know, how are we spending money? Where's that money going? And sometimes that is even that in itself. Uh, is, a, is a difficult uh, question to answer to sort of add up and say how much did we spend yesterday is sometimes a question that takes much longer to answer than you than you might appreciate um, but it's interesting that people are still caring about brand awareness 
they're still caring about customer a lifetime value and really sort of doubling down on um, those long term metrics often in digital in particular we get caught up in clicks and impressions which are very easy to measure very easy to add up but actually don't really have a lot of meaning to the longer lifespan of the business so it's great to see that uh, that marketers were still trying to push forward on brand awareness customer lifetime value that kind of thing um, and i think you know eight out of ten definitely agreeing uh, that it's important to have an overview uh, of all cross-channel marketing activities so the next section of the report is we dug in a little bit into data um, integration and management. So how are people actually tackling uh, that knotty problem today? And when we asked them, what's the challenges here? Well, the number one thing was data veracity. And I think that can be a few things, but it's ultimately, do we actually trust the data to be accurate? And what accuracy could, or inaccuracy can come in many forms. It could be as simple as, is it up to date? Does it include yesterday's data? Is it organized in the way uh, that we would like it uh, to be organized? Can we trust that it's been implemented properly? You know, has it been coded properly? Has it been tagged properly? All that kind of stuff. So that that's definitely the number one concern. And I think falling out of that is the second one. It's like, if you have all of these multiple sources, that you know, 21 on average uh, data sources that we saw on the slide, a few moments ago, then how do you actually connect and unify all of that data? That's tremendously difficult to do that um, and to do that in a way that's uh, that's that's reliable uh, and that can take into account all the all of the idiosyncrasies of of different data sources. Number three, perhaps no surprise, is you know the employee resources and the skill set to do that, uh, but also you know the variety of data. Um, the way that different platforms label data differently differently if you think about all of the different standards in terms of you know video views is it three seconds five seconds ten seconds 30 seconds for a for a video view or just to give one example it is it, really complicated but also you know the, the the sheer volume and accessibility of the data um, is also really challenging and marketers, they, 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 they really grapple with that um, data complexity. Um, only a third of the marketers, of that thousand marketers that we, we polled, said that they had full confidence in the accuracy of their data, which is you know, a pretty low number, actually, when you think about it, given that this is, the, you know, this, is, this is the data that we're using to make decisions, to decide whether to spend money in one place or another, or to decide whether, um, a message or a creative is working or not and i think what's really shocking is that 43 percent of the marketers who responded to our to our um, research said that they spend a week or more every month just cleaning data and harmonizing it so harmonizing means combining it's about fixing the labeling combining uh, that data so it becomes usable and i think that's a really shocking number i don't believe anyone starts a marketing career because they want to spend time building VLOOKUP tables or pivot tables or God forbid writing Python scripts or, or whatever it might be. I don't think any of us get into marketing to do that but I think you know speaking from personal experience in previous roles I've certainly spent time uh, doing that and this it, it, it's fascinating to see how much time is still spent on that frankly low level work um, and you know it's time that would be better spent uh, for marketers on connecting with our customers, trying to understand and empathize with what they want and build uh, creative and uh, the right creative and the right journeys for those customers. I think that's a much better use for everyone's time. I think what's interesting is that the, the high performers in our survey, they were twice as likely um, to use some kind of automation. So we also want to know, you know, data is great. We've spoken a lot of, I've spoken a lot at the moment just about how do we get data into one place so that we can use it. But we, what's, what, you know, this is not an exercise in who can build the smartest Excel formulas. This is an exercise in can we find insight? Can we use that data to make things better? Um, and, you know, so we asked marketers about how, you know, what kind of speed do they have uh, to insight and you know, and how effective are, do they feel they are in, in, in sharing that data and in using that 
that data for, for making decisions. And, and three quarters of those marketers said that their key stakeholders faced challenges accessing and data and accessing insights. And I think that's very symptomatic of you know the conversations I have with with marketers in that so many of the, so much of the time that data lives in a BI function or it lives in a database or a data warehouse that only certain people can access or you need to have SQL skills to extract anything um, out of it. And I think, you know, the it's not just enough to have the data, it's got to be shared, it's got to be accessible by anyone um, who might need it. Um, but I guess on the upside, you know, well, on the upside, 45%, I guess the other way of saying that is uh, less than half uh, of marketers uh, believe that they can actually uh, drive measurable business incomes uh, very well, uh, outcomes very well. So um, again, hard to access the data and, you know, less than half believe that they're actually driving measurable outcomes uh, very well. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's a key point. But when we ask marketers what they need, almost all of them say that real-time decision-making is a really important factor in the success of their marketing. And I think that's very true, particularly in digital as, you know, we're not in the world of running a campaign and then waiting for it to run over the course of eight weeks and to see how it's how it's worked. We want to be in the business of of responding to to um, the data we have so that we can maximize the value we get from our campaigns, that we can promote creative that works, remove creative that doesn't move money from a, one channel to another so that we can get the very best out of our our activity. And over half of marketers, they don't get that that data either on a real time basis or on a daily basis. And that obviously uh, makes it difficult um, to make those decisions. And when we asked um, those marketers to sort of rank what their challenges were with data, and data analysis and, and optimization, that number one thing is that ability to share and collaborate across stakeholders. And I think that's really important. We, I spoke right at the top start about building those digital customer experiences and how marketing is the is the engine for that and the the leader for that but is not the um the only function in the business doing that sharing data collaborating with data whether that's with your finance department with your uh in-store retail people or with your agencies and whatever other partners you might use is really uh critical um Connecting marketing activities to business outcomes. I mean, this is something I, I talk about all the time, but marketing can't just be in its own box, in its own measurement world. We've got to be able to show that we can drive business outcomes that the board cares about, that CEOs care about, that CFO, CFOs care about. And I think, you know, what falls up out of the bottom of that, three, four and five, those challenges really are, are, are sort of the cause of one and two, you know, that challenge being able to to apply learnings quickly to our media strategies that lack of speed in reporting and you know not being able to use real-time data analysis to inform campaign optimization those are definitely uh, the biggest challenges that um, the marketers we polled have and i think you know when we ask marketers uh, you know what are you actually using uh, the data for then we asked them to rank that, but we also asked them, are you satisfied with the way that you use um, that data? So just to give you these, these numbers a bit of context, what that means is that where marketers are using uh, their data to improve their media planning and buying, only 25% of them are completely satisfied with the way that they use that data. So that's that's a pretty low number when you think about it. And you know, in this list, it sort of gets worse that you know only 22% were happy or completely satisfied with the way that they use their data to increase sales and revenue. Given that increasing sales and revenue is probably the number one thing we all do, the fact that four out of five of us aren't really happy with the way that we use data for that, I think is is pretty concerning. And you know, three and four marketers see room for improvement across everything they do. Just to sort of get towards the um, the end of our research here, you know, we asked. Um, Marketers, what do they see in the future for the for the coming year? Definitely number one, um, optimizing marketing spend. I guess that's no surprise, really. We all want to figure out how we can get more of the budgets we have. Um, I think number two is really interesting. That strategic view of overall marketing performance. That's really critical. Um, 
how you know we all know we're doing lots of activity whether that's in search in display social affiliates lots of other things and offline as well let's not forget um having that strategic view of everything is really critical and getting people out of their channels and out of their silos um and i think you know what marketers are trying to do is how can they get you know how can they understand their customers better and do that by having more efficiency on data management and preparation. I already spoke about that on the other slide. Get your nose out of those spreadsheets and, and think more about your customers than building uh, VLOOKUP tables and all the rest of it. Um, those that those were definitely the improvements um, that marketers were looking for uh, in in the coming year. And I think when we asked them, well, you know, what are the business initiatives that you think are going to drive growth? All of these things really tend to, to rely on really solid data if you're going to build a connected customer experience having that data in one place having that single source of truth is critical if you're looking at e-commerce growth whether that's direct to consumer or just building on all what you already have using data to build great personalized experiences is absolutely critical underpinning that same thing about sales growth via things like interactive chat and you know bot driven experiences those bots only work if they've got great data on the customers and what they've done. Um, so I won't go through that whole list, but um, what's really interesting is that data is at the core of everything um, uh, we do. And you know, when we ask marketers, okay, after all of this, what's you know, what is it that's going to drive your success as you try and migrate to this data-driven culture? I think number one ex support from the top i think we'd all recognize that but it is so important because often getting uh, our marketing data right getting our customer data right is something that goes beyond the uh, skills capabilities and budgets of the marketing department often into it often into finance often into other partners and then that helps us track you know, getting that roi tracking is really right really right and actually leaning into technology whether that's ai to help you understand what insights you can get out of your data, uh, but also into platforms and technology to help you to bring all of that together. So um, I've spoken for quite a bit there. I'm going to put these two uh, QR codes on the screen just for a, uh, a couple of minutes. If you want to download the report that I've just gone through, it's uh, a lovely PDF and a lot more detail, um, then you can get that from the, uh, the QR code that's on the left hand side. Uh, of your screen and we've also put out a marketing intelligence playbook so that's more of a, a how to what do you you know what should you start to think about uh, what should you start to uh, put together if you want to progress down that uh, data driven journey that's our marketing intelligence playbook that's the QR code on the right hand of the screen and I think that is a good segue to, for me to say thank you all for participating and listening. I hope you've got some questions. Um, I'm happy to try and answer whatever questions you might have. Um, but um, I think I'll, this is the point where Judith comes back in. I do, yes. Um, that's brilliant. That's Thanks very much for a really insightful presentation, John. So we're now going to have a short Q&A session. Um, so the first question I've got here, John, is... Um, Surprised to see return on investment as number five and sales as number one in your list that you gave. Should profitability not be their number two priority after customer satisfaction at number one? That's a good point. I mean, I, I, we can we can only uh, relay what uh, the responses we got in the survey. Um, you know, that, that that's the the views of the respondents, not of Salesforce. I think. Um, I think profitability potentially, but I think it, it, a lot of that all depends on the growth trajectory of uh, any individual customer. There's a balance, right, between maximizing profit and maximizing revenue growth. And there's plenty of times when companies would prioritize revenue growth because they want to show that expansion uh, to their investors or they want to be able to um, grow a more dominant position. Um, with their suppliers um so i think i think there's a balance there it's not always about pure profitability sure um next question how important is it for marketers to collaborate with the it department to understand the organization's strategy for gathering storing and interrogating data i, th I think it's really important and um and i and i think that part you know 
we have to get get away from the sort of them and us sort of um, uh, attitude that some, sometimes uh, happens and, and think about, you know, the strengths of that partnership. I think, you know, what particularly when we're thinking about customer data and, you know, private data that we, you know, first party data that we might store on our customers, then, you know, the IT department is rightly thinking about how do we make sure we're as compliant as possible? How do we make sure we've uh we're we're holding that in a in a trusted uh consumer um first manner and i think that's um a good um example of how you know it resources can can help bring that viewpoint and make sure that 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 is done in the right way i think the balance though is always that you know when when we're thinking about marketing applications a marketer's use of data what you don't want to get into is a position of every time you need to ask for some data you have to uh, you know uh, scurry off to uh, the IT department or, or to a business uh, insights department or whatever you want to have that data accessible to you and you want to be able to access that data in a way that you can do that with clicks basically and not code and I think that's the balance be uh, between the, those two organizations that um, IT is obviously super important in understanding how to store and hold that data in the right way, uh, but it's also got to be available to marketing in a, in a way that they can use, and you can use that, like I said, in real time, um, so we can use it to improve the ROI of everything we're doing. Sure. Um, next question is, um, we may assume that the leading online brands are the best at managing marketing data, but is this true? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure. <laughs> I, I'm sure. There's a, I'm sure there's a great spectrum uh, of um, of uh, efficacy there. I think you know. I, I I think as you get into big brands, you you get into more complicated uh, challenges around holding data from different countries, uh, you know, across borders, that kind of stuff. If you're only operating in one market, you, you don't have to worry about those things. So there's a different scale there. Um, and you know the, the 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 challenges of that scale are sometimes you know how do we measure things the same way uh, in the UK as we do in France as we do in Germany and obviously if you're a smaller company you don't necessarily need to uh, to worry about that so much um, but you know those I would say that those uh, considerations around privacy around trust about what you do with the data that that's not just a business operation that's I, I would say that's a a value you need to think about whether you're a big company or a small company um, I think that's equally important to, to everyone okay um, next question um, in your presentation you referred to high and low performers and um, the question is asking how did you identify which was which and was that self-rating by the, those individuals or did you have some sort of method for identifying them yeah that was a categorization based on how those individuals responded so i am just quickly scurrying to my notes so i can just go through that again so the high performers um are the ones that said they are satisfied with their sales and marketing investments and, and the roi uh that they're getting back and the low performers basically the ones that say they aren't um so but that's all based on how people have responded right next question is what do you think is the most required technical still skill needed to look at the the data marketing an analysis what do you think um skills people need to develop i don't think it well I mean, there are skills that are useful, but I think more important than that is building the right processes and methodologies, right? And actually, um, you know, I often liken it to building a house, right? You know, if, if you've had a, some work done on your house or you've, you know, or your neighbors uh, have had some done, then there seems to be always an extortion, extortionate amount of time spent digging holes and filling them with concrete. But if you don't do that, if you don't build those foundations, then whatever you build on top will fall down. And I think understanding what your taxonomies are, how you describe things, how you label things, getting all of that right is really important because even if you've got, you know, a super whiz Python programmer or SQL programmer or whatever on staff, if the data's a mess, 
they are going to spend all of those great skills that they have just unpicking other people's messes and it's much better not to get into that mess in the first place and i so i think getting that methodology thinking hard, long and hard about how you you know build that taxonomy it, it, it is more important okay my next question is have you got any tips on how to change your business culture in terms of attitude to data especially where the appropriate tools and systems are in place but key staff refrain from using them <laughs> that's a good one isn't it that's <laughs> Yeah, how how do we get the uh, the data out of the PowerPoint presentation that no one opens um, yeah. into something usable? Well, I I think I think that's that's a good point. So I would start by saying that you know where bring that data to the fore wherever you can, right? And you know a, a lot of what I do at Salesforce is, is is introducing my colleagues to what think what what we have and what we're capable of, right? So. I think spend time educating people, right? It's it's easy to get frustrated quickly, but spend time educating people on what, what's available and why it's important. But most importantly, how it can help those individuals do their jobs better and, and achieve their goals. I think people often, if, if they see data as something that's getting in their way, then yeah, they don't wanna know, right? And that's yeah. human nature, it's more important to you know really spend time educating evangelizing why you have that data why that's critical why that's going to help everyone do their jobs better sure. uh, next question how will, how will we ensure data compliance without catching ourselves off guard by consumers particularly when we're running campaigns with agencies yeah i mean that's that, that that's a really a really good one and i i mean i think it is beholden on all of us to think about the data we've got particularly the, the you know the personally identifiable data that we have on people and and try and understand how did we get that data what permissions did we have um when that data was contributed and you know and understand well what's the value exchange you know how you know what what why it's much better for a consumer to give you data where you've been very clear about what they get in return how um and why you're asking for it and i think that needs to be something that has got to be front and center in everything you do uh, that can't be a question you ask at the end uh, it's got to be a question you ask at the start and um you know the regulatory environment is 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 asking more questions of us around that so it's it's beholden on all of us to take it really seriously uh, and 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 to to hold our partners to that set those same uh, standards as well. Okay, well, I think I'm going to um, make this the last question now. How can marketers start to understand all of the data they have? Because I suspect there could be a danger of having too much information and possibly getting confused if they're gathering the wrong stuff. How can they understand all of the data they have and how best they can use it? I've never met a marketer yet that says, oh, we don't have enough data. Uh, it's always the opposite, yeah. right? We've got so much, we don't know what to do. I mean, I would start, first of all, start with your your use cases, your, what is it you're trying to do? What's the journey you're trying to take a consumer along? Um, Sometimes, you know, that might be a short journey, that might be a long journey, depending on what your business does. But I would start there and then start to look at the data you need to make that journey better and to see if you have it right if yeah. you've got lots and lots of data that's irrelevant well first of all you know ask yourself why you're collecting that in the first place but also focus on what you actually need to achieve the job in hand uh don't you know there's sometimes i think a view that if you have loads and loads of data somehow some magical answer will leap out of it um i've yet to see a concrete example of that Sure, that's excellent. Um, that's great. Thanks, Jonathan. There were some really good questions there from our viewers. Um, so sadly, that's all the time we have now for our webinar today. I'd like to say thanks again to John for today's presentation and to CIM Southwest for organising this event. We do hope you found it interesting and worthwhile. Our next webinar express is Turn Up the Volume, Amplify Culture and Make a Difference. And that is with Nigel Dove as the speaker, who is Director of Marketing and Communications at Jacobs and that will take place on Thursday the 9th of December at 1 p.m. You'll find further details listed on the events page on the CIM website where you'll also be able to register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, thank you once again, John, for a really good presentation 
and a thank you to all that joined us today. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to welcoming you again for one of our webinars in the near future. Goodbye.